Hyundai calls this a sport adventure vehicle, but let's be serious. It's just a modern, fancy El Camino. What's up, everybody? Today, I have a 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Limited, the fully loaded new truck thing from Hyundai. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review this car for you. We're gonna talk about the styling. We're going to have a look at the engine and the transmission. I'll show you all the features in the bed of the vehicle, which there's quite a few. We will look at the other convenience features on the interior of the car and the safety features. And of course, if some of that sounds interesting and some of it sounds boring, check the description below for timestamps. Okay, now let's start by talking about the styling of the vehicle. And I think in general, the new Hyundai products look very nice. I had a Hyundai Tucson that I tested last month on my channel. And the Santa Cruz and the Tucson are related, and of course, that means they have similar design language, but I think it works even better on the Santa Cruz. Just this body style lends itself well to the angles that you see kind of on the driver's front door. This limited model has unique 20 inch wheels that I like on this particular car. And the other thing that you get with the Santa Cruz Limited is premium dark chrome front and rear bumper trim and tailgate handle. So the front end and the back end look a little bit different and it integrates the aggressive premium LED daytime running lights very, very well. When the car's off, it just looks like a grill. And then when the running lights come on, it really looks cool. It's kind of hard to pick it up on the camera, but I'll try to show you that. And then in these kind of lower uh, auxiliary light pods, that is actually where the low beam and the high beam LED headlights are mounted on this particular car. And then you have the turn signals integrated in there as well. So it's a very aggressive looking uh, front fascia, especially at night. It just lights up really, really nicely. And again, the uh, dark chrome accents are a nice touch as well. I have noticed a few little Easter eggs in the Hyundai Santa Cruz. You have little logos of a Santa Cruz above all of the wheel wells. And in the rear taillights, it says designed in California. That's very nice, one for the home team. And there's a Santa Cruz logo as well on the step on the back bumper. They still need to catch up with Jeep as far as the number of Easter eggs. And if I'm missing a few, please let me know about it in the comments. Now we're gonna have a look at the engine and the transmission on the Hyundai Santa Cruz Limited. The base model Santa Cruz has come standard with a 2.5 liter non-turbo engine, but of course, this being the fully loaded model, it's got the turbo 2.5 liter with 281 horsepower and 311 torque, and it does give excellent performance. Hyundai's H-Track all-wheel drive system is also standard on the limited model. It's kind of a part-time automatic system. There is a button that you can push to activate it so that it's always sending some power to all four wheels. But if you just leave that off, then it'll go into two-wheel drive mode. It'll default to the front wheels for better fuel efficiency. Um, the one strange thing is the transmission on this car. And if you've looked at Hyundai's website, you might be wondering, what transmission does this car have? Because it shows that an eight speed shift tronic automatic is standard on the non-turbo Santa Cruz models, fair enough. But on the turbo Santa Cruz models, it shows two standard transmissions. I don't know why they have it set up like this. It shows that the eight speed shift tronic automatic and an eight speed wet clutch, dual clutch automatic are both standard. If you know anything about transmissions, technically that's usually two different types of transmissions. From what I can tell, this does have a dual clutch automatic in it, um, which would be kind of referred to as a sequential manual transmission. It doesn't really feel like a dual clutch for the most part when you're driving it. It just feels like a regular automatic transmission, which is fine. It does its job no problem. The only time you can really tell the difference is if you bring the car to a complete stop, let your foot off of the brake, the electronic clutch has to engage and you kind of feel that. It's not the same sort of positive forward momentum that you would get with a standard torque converter automatic. Now we're gonna move on to the bed of the Hyundai Santa Fe Limited and there are quite a few features back here. Of course, the Limited is the top of the line so every possible factory option comes included as standard on this one. First and foremost is the tonneau cover. It's a very nice unit. You just hit the handle, folds up and stows, rolls away right there. 
pull it back to put it into place. You can also lock it, of course. There's a little locking mechanism on the inside of it underneath the handle. And the way that works is when you close the tailgate and lock the vehicle and walk away, the tailgate is keyed to the rest of the central locking and in fact the factory key fob so when you walk up to the tailgate when the truck is locked if you have the key fob you can just hit the button and open the tailgate if you don't have the key fob it's going to stay locked something else that's keyed to that and i think this is a really cool feature is the sort of underbed storage area now when you have the tailgate down you'll notice it says open with an arrow there you put your hand under there and push and there is a little electric actuator to open this underbed storage area. Uh, if the car is locked and you don't have the smart key fob in your pocket, that won't open. So that's actually a lockable cargo area and it'll stay locked when you lock the vehicle and walk away from it. You also have LED bed lighting standard in the Santa Cruz Limited. There are some LED lights on the side of the bed and then one up top by the center mounted high stop lamp as well. And you have these handy little cubby holes on the side, uh, one on each side that you can store things in there. Those don't lock with the key fob, so be careful what you put in there. Don't put anything too valuable. But the one on the passenger side does contain the 115 volt household style power outlet. And we have a lot of nice little nifty cargo tie downs so you can keep your stuff secure in the bed of your Santa Cruz as well. And my favorite little feature on the Hyundai Santa Cruz bed is its little tiny rear view window that you can open from the back seat. It's just funny to me that it's so small. It does have a defroster element in there. So if it gets cold and you turn on the rear window defrost, it'll defrost that little center window as well. It's just a cute little window. But Hyundai, if anybody from your corporate office watches this, I really hope that you guys can put one of these in like an action movie with a car chase and have the bad guys shooting at somebody out of that back window. I just think that would be hilarious. Now you also have some nice little integrated steps in the corners of the back bumper if you need to uh, get a little bit more leverage with whatever you're messing with in the bed. And just for the record, you do get a spare tire in the Hyundai Santa Cruz. It's mounted underneath the bed. It is a space saver spare, but you do get a spare tire. Now we're going to start talking about the convenience features. And in the back seat, there's a couple of things to point out. You do have two standard USB ports for your back seat passengers to charge their mobile devices. You also have rear air vents to keep your back seat passengers comfortable. And you've got some handy dandy storage underneath the bottom of the back seat that does include the tools if you need to change the spare tire and some additional storage for your own personal items. Now we're going to move up front to the convenience features on the Hyundai Santa Fe Limited, and there are a ton of them. I'm not even going to bother to mention power windows, mirrors, door locks. Of course, it has all that. Sunroof is standard. Leather seats are standard. Wireless charging is standard. Rain sensing windshield wipers, which came on a little bit this morning while I was driving over here. You have a 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster and a 10.25 inch touchscreen with navigation as standard on the limited models. The touchscreen navigation, I really like. I feel like it uses its real estate well. It gives you a little image of like what road signs are coming up when you reach an interchange on the freeway when you have the navigation active to tell you where to go. That's a cool touch. The digital instrument cluster looks really nice. I do wish it was a little bit more customizable. Uh, there's only three different types of gauges that you can have set there and it's either keyed to a drive mode or you can just pick one and leave it there if you are in love with it. I miss the Ford My Color Dash. Does anyone remember that? I had a Mustang that had that. You can put it 120 million different colors. It was great. I don't know why you can't do that with all these new digital gauge clusters, but they don't let you on this car. Uh, you do have heated and cooled seats in the front, and you have a heated steering wheel. You have two USB ports in the front and a 12-volt power outlet to go along with the wireless charging I mentioned earlier. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard, and it is wireless in this car. Um, weirdly, the smart cruise control with stop and go, if you want that on a Santa Cruz, you have to get a limited model. Based on what I saw on Hyundai's website, it's not available on the lower level packages, which that's kind of strange because they do make it available on lower level packages on other models in the line. But from what I saw on the website, if you want the smart cruise with the stop and go on a Santa Cruz, 
you got to get a limited. The proximity key is standard, so you have the push button start, and you can just leave the key in your pocket and walk up, open the door. Now we'll move on to the safety features, and again, there's a ton of them. Uh, the forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, blind spot collision avoidance, rear cross traffic alert and rear cross traffic accident avoidance, driver attention warning, lane keeping assist, lane follow assist. Basically, the car is going to prevent you from trying to crash into something in the front. It's going to prevent you from trying to swerve into something in the side, and it's going to try to prevent you from backing into somebody in a parking lot if they're coming sideways. That's what all that means. You do have the surround view monitor, which is kind of the 360 degree view. Uh, when you put the car in reverse, you can also activate it with a button on the dash. That's a pretty cool feature if you're trying to park back into a spot, parallel park, or go off road. Um, and the other thing that that gives you is the blind spot view monitor, which is really cool. So you do have the standard blind spot monitors, like the little red lights that light up when there's a car in your blind spot that are mounted in the rear view mirrors on the outside of the car. But then you also have these cameras that will show up depending on uh, which turn signal you activate. Those cameras show up on the digital instrument cluster and it does give you a little bit more information. Uh, I always find that handy when you're making a right turn on a city street to see if you got a bicyclist coming because you know they just do whatever they want. Now a couple other things that you get when you get the limited and I'm still trying to wrap my mind around these things is the navigation based smart cruise and the highway drive assist. Now like I said earlier the smart cruise control with the stop and go um, is standard when you get the limited and you also have the lane keep assist and the lane follow assist. So when you have all that activated uh, the smart cruise will maintain a distance from the car in front of you and kind of speed up and slow down to pace the car in front of you. And the lane keep assist and the lane follow assist, if the car's camera can read the lines that differentiate the lanes, it can kind of control the steering to keep you centered in your lane. Now, it's not a self-driving system. You need to keep your hands on the wheel. The navigation-based smart cruise, if you have that activated and you're on a highway that it recognizes, it can allegedly, um, if you have the speed set to the speed limit, it can adjust your smart cruising speed if the speed limit changes based on its own database. And if you have the highway drive assistant engaged, it will slow down for any upcoming curves that a standard smart cruise control system wouldn't do because it doesn't know from curves, it only knows if there's something in front of it or not. I've been playing with these things today, and let me get back to you on that because I haven't quite figured out how to make them work yet. I know how to turn it on, but I can't seem to get it to do anything on the highway. But that's what that supposedly is. Thank you so much for watching my review of this beautiful Hyundai Santa Cruz. I really like this car. Hope that came through in the review. And if you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and have yourself a fantastic day. Bye-bye.